Hey, I'm Jeff and welcome back to another video. Lately, I've been noticing some yellowing to the edges of my Monstera Deliciosa leaf as well as some browning tips, just little areas where they look a little bit crispy. So I want to take you along and troubleshoot this issue as it can be caused by a number of different issues. So over or under watering, inconsistent watering if you're letting it get too dry for too long. Also a lack of light can cause issues and yellowing with leaves. Bugs are always a concern as well but I think there is one more reason that is causing the issue with my plant, so let's check it out. If you're unsure about knowing when to water the plant or if you're concerned about over or under watering issues, just make sure that you use a moisture meter or a bamboo skewer, especially if you have a plant in a larger pot, there's just more volume of soil and it tends to stay moist or wet for longer periods of time compared to a smaller pot. Even if the top one to two inches are dry, the lower portion of the soil might still be wet, so you don't want to give it more water than it actually needs. Now, if you don't want to go out and buy a moisture meter, um, you can use just a bamboo skewer. Uh, the same concept, you just put it in the soil, put it all the way to the bottom and let it sit there for about a minute or so. If there's any soil stuck to the skewer, then that means it is wet or moist. So let's pull it out. And really there's maybe a little bit at the very bottom. I don't feel any moisture on the stick as well. So this thing is absolutely bone dry and I don't think I watered it uh, too long ago. So it's drying out way too fast. A very easy way to determine whether your plant is receiving enough light or not is to download a light meter on your smartphone or you can buy an actual uh, digital light meter off of Amazon. Uh, this app is Photon, I believe it's called. It's in the foot candle setting. You place the light sensor underneath the light source close to the leaf and you can see it's getting around 17, 1800 foot candles, which is extremely high light. And this is exactly what this plant needs. Now, if your plant isn't receiving enough light, you can always supplement it with grow lights or you can move it to a sunnier location. Just make sure that you slowly transition or you slowly acclimate that plant to higher light. Otherwise you're gonna get uh, burning on the leaves if it's in natural sunlight. So just every few days, just slightly move it closer to the light source and that will transition it or hopefully transition it to a higher light source so that this plant can receive more light. Now for pests. And I know I'm dealing with uh, some spider mites downstairs here. I've been spraying off all my plants. I've been taking them to the shower, spraying them off. And then ones that I have found spider mites on, I've been treating with an insecticidal soap. Uh, I like to use a little flashlight and you can illuminate it behind a leaf. It's kind of tough to tell when this light is on and turn this off, but you place the flashlight behind the leaf. And if there's any pests, uh, specifically thrips, you'll see a like almost like a dark little shadow sitting on the leaf. You can also check in between the leaves, um, more specifically at the petiole where spider mites like to hang out. So just shine the light behind the leaf and then you can um, sometimes see a uh, little webbing on the underside or close to the petiole and I'm not really seeing anything right now. So uh, I'm not really thinking that pest issues are causing this yellowing just because it's fairly consistent along the edges. If you have a sap sucking pest like a thrip or a spider mite, you may see blotches of yellow on the leaf. Um, this is pretty consistent just to the edges. Um, and you can see there's some browning here as well. So I don't think a pest is causing this issue, but what I think is happening is that this plant is extremely root bound. So the only thing we can do is take this out of the pot, have a look at the root system. There's a couple other things that are uh, going on with the plant as well. There is aerial roots all over the place. So I have them growing on the ground. It's been growing in this pot previously. I have, I've had to take it out and then you can see the main portion of the stem is actually growing away from the support stake. So I want to correct that as well. So now I have to do the monumentous task of removing this large Monstera from the corner here uh, amongst all these plants. Um, so let's do that and then take it out of the pot and check out these roots. Before I take it out of the pot, I just want to show you another way to tell whether your plant is getting enough light or not. If it is not receiving enough light or if it's in low light, the internodal spacing will be quite large. So here is a node and here's a node. If the space in between two nodes is fairly stretched out, you know that your plant is not getting enough light. I've recently been giving mine more light and you can see up here, the internodal spacing is much shorter. And now we can have a better look at the roots. So when I push this pencil in, all I hear is cracking. 
So I am fairly confident this pot is just full of roots and it's been in this pot for about two to three years. So that is kind of the recommendation for repotting a Monstera is every two years or so, um, just to give it a larger pot uh, because it might be root bound. You will get yellowing leaves if your plant is root bound. It's just drying out way too fast. It's not able to uptake nutrients and water fast enough. Um, basically it's suffocating in this pot. Okay, just so you can see, how large this plant is. Um, normally I would recommend doing this outside, but where I am here in Canada, I'm in Saskatchewan, it's quite hot and dry. It's perfect season for thrips and there are a ton of thrips outside. So I don't wanna take this outside and then bring it back downstairs here because guaranteed there's gonna be thrips on here. Um, yeah, so I have my little uh, ki well, kitchen butter knife. I'm going to try and loosen this up as best as I can. And hopefully I get all this in frame. Like the plant is like, pretty well touching the ceiling here. So I'm just gonna put the knife around the edges of the pot and I'm going to loosen up. I'm pretty sure it's going to be root bound because I can feel like cracking. Don't rush this process either. So all I'm doing is placing the knife in the pot right along the side and then I'm simply just pulling it lightly away from the pot, just separating any roots. I think this is gonna be crazy. I don't want to pull on the stem, but sometimes that's the only way to get a large plant out of a pot. I'm just going to see if it moves at all. Yep, it's going to move. Okay. I haven't looked at this yet. I just pulled the camera back a little bit just so um, we can see the roots once it gets out of the pot here. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that this is root bound and that this is causing the issue. Oops, I just hit the top here. So it is definitely a root bound. Look at these roots. This is one big root ball. I decided to turn on the camera and talk about the internal battle that is going on in my mind right now. Now the easy thing for this would just be to upsize the pot and plant it or pot it in something a little bit larger. But I'm thinking of chopping the stem and propagating the top portion into the same pot and letting it continue to grow uh, larger leaves. Now, there's a couple reasons for that. Um, it'll be much easier to correct the, um, the curvature here for a support stake um, instead of dealing with this uh, big long stem. Uh, the second reason is you can see down here, the base of the stem is fairly thin and as it continues to grow and mature, the stem thickens up. It's fairly beefy up here. Um, so I want this beefy portion to be lower in the pot so when the plant continues to grow, it'll have a nice support system. So the problem I'm having with right now is how root bound this is and I can't just place aerial roots uh, like into the soil and expect them to grow. Aerial roots are different than soil roots. Soil roots provide uh, moisture and nutrients to the plant, whereas aerial roots almost exclusively provide support for the plant. They will obtain, I guess, ambient moisture from like your room air humidity if it's fairly high, but otherwise uh, they are basically just for supporting the plant as it grows up a tree in its natural habitat. So. I'm thinking of cutting it somewhere around here because this aerial root, I did tuck into the soil and at this point here, it has transitioned from an aerial root to a soil root. Now the problem is, is I don't know how large this root system is um, and how much damage I'm gonna have to do to get this root out of the, out of the soil here. I guess I should show how I'm doing this as well. So I'm just following the root with my fingers in the soil and I'm isolating where the root goes. And then I'm simply just kind of using my hand or my fingers here to uh, dig away at the soil and remove the root from the root ball. I'm doing my best to salvage those roots without breaking them. But unfortunately, uh, like I think I just did, Nope, it's still intact. Um, yeah, you are going to break some roots. Hopefully it's not the ones that I am wanting to save. So I am being quite aggressive here, um, breaking lots of roots, but I'm trying to salvage, like I said, some of these larger secondary roots. Okay, this looks hilarious. Just a big spaghetti mess on the table. So I have been able to isolate 
the two main area roots that have grown into the soil and have transitioned to soil roots. Now I'm going to take this crusty looking knife and I assure you that I have sanitized it with some alcohol spray prior to using this. I'm just gonna take off the support and then all I'm gonna do is take the utility knife right here in between two nodes. So here's a node, here's a node, and I'm going to make a nice clean cut right in between those nodes with my dull knife, like that. I always like to go back after a shot and review my footage and thank goodness for autofocus because when I made the cut, it was just super blurry. Um, so yeah, thanks uh, to the autofocus for that. Now I'm gonna remove the other support tie here and I'm going to take it off the support stake, gonna realign it and place it in the pots. Okay, I placed the large top cutting on the support plank. This is actually a bunk bed uh, mattress slat. Uh, I just repurpose it as a growing or support pole. Now for positioning this plant, just because the top portion kind of veered off to the side a little bit, I am positioning it so that it grows straight and you want these arrow roots to be facing uh, the back, uh, so against the plank. So this is the back of the plant. At the front, there is no aerial roots, and you can see um, I've just positioned them so that they come off to the side of the plank on each side. Now I'm gonna show you what I'm going to do with these aerial roots here in a minute, but now I have, and I have to protect the support roots, which are just dangling down here. Um, I'm going to use another support tie just to secure this to the side of the board. Um, if I place this directly on the board, then it, well, actually that's okay. I, I might do it like that so it uh, grows nice and straight. I was gonna have it off to the side just so it could be a little bit more um, in line or nice and straight, but that should be okay like that. Now, just to make it a lot easier to work with, I'm actually going to be cutting off these aerial roots and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with them after I uh, pot it up in its new uh, terracotta pot or the original terracotta pot. Um, these aerial roots, like I said, they don't do anything for the plant other than provide structural stability and maybe like a little bit of moisture absorption, I guess. Um, so now I'm just looking at how I'm going to position this in the pot. The pot's gonna be roughly maybe that tall. So I'm going to cut these roots, something like that for now. This one's actually snapped right there. So I'll cut those off and there's a longer one down here. And then same with this one up here. Actually, I'm gonna leave this one. I had to grab a slightly larger pot. Um, it's the, I think the same diameter, but the base is quite a bit larger uh, just to accommodate the roots at the bottom. And then here is the soil mixture that I'm using. This is Fox Farm soil. Um, here's some ProMix orchid bark, and then here's some big chunky perlite. So it's a two part soil, Fox Farm soil, one part um, orchid bark, one part perlite and then I'm just going to mix it up and use my little root rake and just kind of mix this up. You want something that drains well, holds on to some moisture, but doesn't stay wet for too long. So something like that is what I will be using. I know there's many different, I guess, mixtures that uh, people recommend, but uh, this is what I'll be using for my plant. Again, I recommend doing this outside because there's no room down here. Okay, so here is the root ball. I'm gonna place it in the pot and I positioned it on the support plank. I don't know if you can see it, slightly above the bottom. So I want the bottom of the plank to sit at the bottom of the pot, but I don't want the roots um, like at the bottom as well. So I'm going to place the plank in here first because I want to place that right at the very bottom. I'm just moving some soil out of the way. This just provides extra support, um, making sure it's in the center like that. Now I can tuck in as carefully as I can these roots. And I'm just going to place them in. I'm gonna see if I can show you, probably not. So the roots look something like that. Now this is what I'm thinking, this leaf right here will be below the soil line um, when I bring the soil up to here. So I'm actually going to snip this leaf off because it's probably just going to rot off uh, at some point anyways. So I'm gonna take my nice clean pruning shears and get as close to the stem as I can and just snip that off like that. 
Now I can place soil around the, uh, the base of the stem there, supporting it even better. I have to keep an eye on the plant and how it, I guess, transitions to this repotting, just because this aerial root previously was outside of the pot. Now I'm placing it with soil around it. So this may rot, I'm not too sure. I've never done this before. If I'm starting to see some significant decline, like uh, more yellowing leaves, then I have to pull it out of the pot and check these roots and make sure this one uh, did not rot. I might not add soil right to the top. Uh, maybe something like that. I'm just gonna place this around there, maybe a little bit at the back, just so that the plank is stable. I'm gonna pack that down, but maybe I'll uncover that for a little bit. And now just the final pencil poke, making sure all those air gaps are filled with soil. I am going to give this one some water as well because the soil and the roots were extremely dry. So I'm gonna go get my watering can and give this some water. Now for these aerial roots, and I said I would talk about what to do with them. This is kind of off center a little bit. Um, now that I cut them, they will regrow. And the thing that you can do is you can train them to grow into soil. So all you have to do is just tuck them inside the pot. It's not touching the soil, just tuck them inside the pot. When it gets a new growth point, it's going to find its way down into the soil and these can become uh, soil roots. Now with that one that I did not cut, it's got a fresh end right here. It's very pliable. Older area roots will have a casing on it. Um, you will hear some cracking that is normal. You're not damaging the root. It's just the outer casing. If that happens, um, there's nothing wrong with the root. So I'm going to tuck this one into the soil, just laying it right on top. And same with this one back here. Um, just tucking it into the pot like so. Now, I'm gonna move this to the side if I can. I am using filtered tap water. I don't think I'm going to completely soak this. Um, we'll see how it does with drainage here. Um, so far I've used half of a watering can. I don't know if you can see me or not, but i um, just going to probably empty this can in here just to help settle the soil and then give those roots a good watering. Okay, so it's coming out the bottom of the drain hole. That's exactly what I wanna see. Uh, there is a small little gap in between the pot and the board. I'm gonna fill that with a little bit of soil and then I'll place it back in its uh, place on the floor. I got the area pretty well cleaned up. This whole portion of the floor was just covered in roots and soil. Uh, so I vacuumed that up quickly and the plant is now back in its corner. And you can see it's sitting a little bit lower than it used to. Uh, it was pretty well touching this light. Now it has some distance between the two. It's under the Soltec grow light as well as the mother plant spectrum, which is providing the top down light. Um, everything is uh, placed back in its original position or placement. Now I just have to let it uh, continue to grow and acclimate to its new soil and pot. And obviously I'll be providing some updates down the road. So I hope this video helps you troubleshoot some issues that you might be having with your Monstera Deliciosa. Otherwise, I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. Thanks again for watching everyone. Take care, bye.